Welcome! Hey! Hello! Okay. Um, oh, the, some videos might not play. Thanks, that's very reassuring. Okay. So some of you might have seen uh, the Daily Dweeps already. Uh, it was supposed to actually play it, but it looks like it won't play the thing. So... Uh, oh, I'm physically... The space bar, okay. But before this, there should actually be the video. So, mwah, okay. So, uh, go to YouTube, search for The Daily Tweeps, and you will find it. Uh, it's hilarious, it's great. It should have burned a minute out of my time, but no, let's just go straight into it. Uh, this is the original sketch. So, um, uh, I, was, I was working a lot, I'm an animator, and I was working a lot, and at some point, uh, I, I just kind of wanted to do an animation exercise from scratch where it wasn't like, um, a character with fingers and, and hair and, and whatnot, just something that was super, super simple. And just try to figure out, can I, can I just, I don't know, do a sketch of a character that has super simple shapes, and it doesn't matter if it looks super appealing and if it's like conforming to all the character design rules or whatnot, just a sketch, just a quick sketch, and then I'm not gonna overthink it, I'm just gonna model it, not do the perfect topology at all, and then I'm just gonna rig it with like the fewest amount of bones, so it's gonna be, Real time, all the way through. Uh, I did it, I, I just did this super quick sketch of like, eh, different, uh, okay, I'm just gonna go with the guy in the middle. And then, um, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I don't know why, but I made like a little logo and I thought, eh, it's gonna be this kind of cute little thing. Uh, and then I animated the guy. It's so cute! And there comes a volleyball, and he's like, hell no, I hate volleyball for some reason. So, so the idea was that I would try to take a character that looks weird, like it doesn't, it is super simple, but then see if I can get uh, the character to shine through, just through the animation. So that's kind of, uh, that was my standard. Also, uh, I had no plan for an ending. This was never a short film. It was just an animation exercise. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things that I wanted to kind of put out there as a little challenge is how many different waves of emotion can I make this guy go through? So, you know, happy, hungry, sad, devastated, angry, all that stuff. Space. And, um, I put it to the side, put it like shelved this thing, and I didn't do anything with it for years. Uh, I, you know, I moved to Amsterdam, I, I did Cosmos Launder, a lot of different things. And every now and then I might like do a sketch that felt like, oh, this is kind of maybe in that universe. Uh, but I never really took it anywhere. I would maybe find a weekend or two every now and then, maybe I kind of dived back into it. I added like a little chicken thing instead of the volleyball. And then I animated a little bit with it, but it was all like half blocking, half not, um, never with an ending in mind. I think that's kind of where it stagnated. I just kind of stopped working on it. <laughs> it's a little bottle cap coming in, and then he Kicks the chicken away, super happy with himself. There's no more food, there's only devastation and despair and angst and human emotions or personal people emotions. And he walks away from it. So that's kind of where I was at with this thing. Uh, at some point, Andy saw it. There's there a lot of people at the studio that saw this thing. And they're like, you know, this is really cute. Like, I know it's just a weird animation exercise that you did. You never had any intention to do maybe anything bigger. But what if we just made this be one of the open movies? Uh, and it's going to be like the shortest one. It's going to be the cutest one. Uh, we just have to come up with a good ending. And uh, I was like, yeah, like that sounds awesome. Especially we were doing Agent 327. And it, it, it was like a year of my life. And it's uh, a challenge. It was a huge challenge to do that thing. And this felt like a break. Like, we're still being um, very uh, prolific. We're making stuff, we're making content for the Blender crowd and, and doing an open movie and all that. But it's not as challenging per se. You know, it's, it's, it's more of a fun little thing. Uh, 
Um, there were some challenges though. So just as an example, like these were really old files that I had been working with years ago. And we were trying to figure out the scale of everything. And so when we put everything in the right scale, I would have these weird ass glitches and then I would have to redo some of the stuff. So it wasn't like I just took what we had and then we can just move on from there. There were artifacts that I had to work with. And uh, Andy updated the local, so that looks beautiful. If you remember the Crafty one I did, uh, yeah, that's gorgeous, gorgeous. And yes, the scale, uh, you can see it there. I just kind of, kind of figuring out what would be the scale, like how, would the, how big would the rooster be and the girl and all that. Uh, this is behind my desk. It's, a, it's a right there behind me. So I could, I could always kind of go there and visually uh, get a representation of the different sizes. Uh, I got my nephew, Eric, uh, as a little uh, reference for, for the girl. So uh, just feeding the dog. Uh, he just happened to have a plush toy dog. It was kind of cute. Didn't really matter, but yeah. Um, and then we have something interesting happening <laughs> where, uh, you know, there were some particle issues. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, uh, hello. Um, thank you, Kelty. Yes, no uh, I, I just did the rendering for this and uh, it, uh, it, it was really uh, very smooth. Um, we decided for some reason to render this in 4K and then during the end of the production it became sort of uh, 8K stereoscopic for no reason. <laughs> Um, uh, so, and uh, we had uh, no issues at all with that. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding, it was a bit, uh, it was a bit uh, hicky, but um, uh, there was one particular issue that I wanted to share with you, which uh, that's, the, that's the one thing that I, uh, I learned and I, I, I have to keep that in my head and uh, it's also good as a little reminder. So, uh, <laughs> the particle system. Um, we had uh, we had a lot of projects before this. So Cosmos Laundromat, we did a, a huge, colorful tornado. Uh, lots of stuff going on. We had coming on this Lamigos, where we had a train with uh, with particles, smoke, and that kind of stuff. We had uh, we had uh, snow, like lots of snow effects uh, on uh, on glass half. We had all these motion graphics particles. So uh, we thought for this, it's like. Uh, it's uh, just some breadcrumbs, so it's, it's, about, it's about the breadcrumbs that the dog spits out and then they land on the rooster and he's all covered with it and we thought, oh, yeah, what? this is kind of a simple thing, like what could possibly go wrong? So uh, <clears throat> uh, I hope that it's, this video plays, ah yeah, okay, so this was uh, my first, uh, well not the first simulation, but the, really the simulation that worked uh, in the 3D viewport. So I was able to stick some particles on the rooster, make sure that they, uh, they kind of, um, maybe we can just go back and play it again. So yeah, they, they land on the ground, they have some kind of bounciness to them, and then the dog just kind of licks the thing and they, they fly off, really simple. Uh, worked beautifully, uh, I was able to cache everything and so it's all baked into the blend file. And then uh, when we sent it to uh, the farm, something weird happened where, I mean, there's, there's some issues where the particles just kind of glitch into place and uh, uh, move around and stuff, but that's not really the problem. I mean, it's a problem, but those things can be fixed. But for some reason, the particles were like floating in the air and I couldn't really figure it out because in the 3D viewport, they, they were there on the ground. And in the render, they were like, in the air. Why? Uh, so for, for, for about solid two weeks, I was trying to figure out like, what is happening here? Is the caching not working? Is something with the emitter not going right? Or uh, what? So, um, the, the thing uh, with this movie is that we, we try to, oh yeah, uh, that was my reaction. So uh, the thing with this movie is that we try to, uh, we try to render everything uh, with motion blur because now Cycles has this beautiful 3D motion blur and it's sort of, uh, thanks to the agent products, is sort of uh, fast 
to faster to render. Um, so we thought, okay, let's just render this with motion blur. We tried some artistic, uh, some artistic motion blur with, where it kind of trails off, like uh, like we did for the agent, which is really friendly uh, for animators because they uh, they don't they don't want to have this thing where it predicts the future, even though it is actually physically accurate. But well, who cares? I'll so, explain later. It's fine. Yeah. So uh, we had motion blur enabled for this whole scene. That's just one thing. Um, so the the thing that was happening, kind of. So this is the 3D viewport, and uh, when I, uh, thanks to Sergey, we have this beautiful feature now that it has is called subframe uh, that shows the subframes of the <laughs> particles or of the of the whole animation. So apparently the particles were not staying on the floor; they were kind of oscillating between frames up and down uh, in this whole in this whole animation. So. They're, they're kind of hitting the floor, and then they kind of go like in and out, and in and out. And I knew that something was was going to happen with particles and motion blur, so that's why I kind of uh, disabled the motion blur just for the particles. Uh, you can do that; it's just a it's just a little checkbox. So because there's always, for some reason, some glitches where particles pop in and out. But uh, so they didn't have any motion blur, but they were still like kind of in the wrong place. And uh, turns out when we did this whole uh, motion blur thing, where there's this beautiful trail from the current frame, the frame that the animator sees, uh, into the past, so to speak, um, it looks beautiful for the animation. But um, what we found out, well, what what suddenly came to realize, we came to the realization that. Uh, we use this function called, uh, uh, like we use the shutter curve, and we use this little thing that's called end, of, end on frame. So it kind of sampled the, the animation at the end of the frame, so when the particle was in the up position. So that's why all the particles were kind of floating above the floor, because it was sampling the up position of that oscillating particles. Um, which is a bug in itself, but uh, but it's still now this is uh, yeah I, we came to this understanding. Um, uh, so what we had to do is switch back to the old method that we also used on the agent, which is center on frame and then kind of just uh, cap the curve off, which also kind of results in this trail motion blur. Um, but yeah. Um, that's uh, that, that was my learning curve, so to speak. So that is bad, and that is good. Uh, well, I have this thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have two mics. So uh, the particle thing was great. Uh, it was perfect. Yeah, except for all the challenges. And then uh, Andy went on vacation, left me alone with it. And the problem is I don't know anything about particles, so I just started frame by framing every single particle my, uh, by hand myself. So the entire chicken is covered, the, the rooster is covered, but I individually put all those things there, and they were way more than there. Like, this is me halfway through the thing. And then the, all the particles that fall down, that's just me also putting like little particles into the rig and hand, you know, animating that falling down. They are, there are exactly 21 particles that will fall down, uh, seven red, seven uh, yellow, and seven green. And then when the dog kind of runs over them, there's all this interaction that happens. Uh, it wasn't until I saw it rendered that I realized this is going to be great for all the people that zoom in on the 8K, because <laughs> I had made them so small that like you can barely see it, just if you see a regular HD version or whatnot. But it, it was fine, it was fine. And you know, we pushed through, and it's supposed to be a happy project, not sad project, happy, happy, happy. So um, we did sound recording, of course, so it's me barking like a dog and, and doing all that stuff. Uh, we had a voice actress that did uh, Devin Compton, she did the, the girl, and then I did all the weird creatures, the animals, and Sander Hauptmann, he was uh, our sound designer. And then the premiere was coming up, and uh, yeah, we're super, super excited. This guy was super excited. It was going to be Wednesday, October 18th, and everybody got excited. We tried to ramp up the PR machine, and, and even like the kind of international PR machine, just to get the Italian crowd going. Um, and then there were a couple of technical difficulties. So, so that's me late at night on the Wednesday, still technically Wednesday, uh, crying. You know, we, we had technical issues. So the following morning was the release, uh, and it was great. And we had great receptions. We um, 
we made like little 3D prints of the guys. You can see it here. Uh, the rooster is uh, not fully assembled, but I have printed out all the different parts. So that's cool. And the, all those things will be available on the cloud. You know, we can print, print it out yourself. Uh, on, the, on the cloud, we started doing tutorials, so like a tutorial how I did the logo, how I animated the logo. And uh, we have all the, the different rigs uh, available. I just put the girl right now. She's, by the way, she does not have proper facial uh, rigging because it wasn't really needed. And, you know, when you're running out of time and you have a deadline, you're like, oh, you know, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Um, T-shirt, uh, kind of a crew T-shirt maybe coming up. Uh, it's going to be fun. And then, you know, you've got, you got some nice people uh, taking the 3D printable versions and, and printing them. And it's so, so sweet. Uh, is Francesco here, by the way? Is he, did he run away? Okay, okay. No, I was wondering because uh, right at the end, I was just hoping we could maybe play the movie. It's on YouTube. Can you access it here and just play it? Yeah, okay. That would be awesome. Because this is the technically the final slide, so let's just check check out the thing. Yeah, no, no, yes, yes, please, technician, please. <laughs> so, no, well, I'll just entertain everybody while we're doing. It. Okay, hey, so. What's so, <laughs> oh, right? Does it mean you didn't use the particles? Oh, good question, Andy. Uh, did we not use any particles in this entire thing? Eh, well, uh, when he's spewing out the food, I think that's the only time when we actually use the particles. Uh, every, any other instance, like she's, she has the food, she's pouring the food into the little bowl. That's, that's hand animated, that's just me. And then, you know, he's grabbing the thing, that's just hand animated. So, yeah, it's, it's so worth it. I mean, you can really get a sense of it not being particles, right? Uh... Oh, yeah, the daily dweebs. So, well, so this, is, this is great. This is, uh, this is how everybody should do it. You should go on YouTube, the daily dweebs, search it. It's going to be the first thing that pops up. And by the way, we did do this in stereoscopic, so there is a version coming out that is like full 8K stereoscopic. Uh, we were going to release like the entire thing with that originally, but the problem is we didn't realize this until like this is some of the technical issues that we had. Uh, on the day of the release, right late there in the evening, apparently uh, if you release it that way, then anyone on a mobile or whatever, they're going to have this weird split screen thing. So by default, Gesundheit. By default, you won't have like the normal version and then go into settings and, and make it stereoscopic. So that's why we just we figured, okay, it's going to be two separate uploads. There's going to be like the normal one, which is going to be sweet and nice, but then there's going to be the stereoscopic version. So let's take a look. Maybe dim the lights. Ah, Dixie. Here you go, Thank you so much. Yay!